Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, on Sunday, March 6th, 2022. I hope you have had a lovely week, and it has certainly been an exciting week. So I want to sort of talk about that a little bit before we go any further. Um, So when we do these reports of astrology and we um, talk about what's coming up, it helps to feel into what's happening. And we are in a point where we have had this massive conjunction of Venus and Mars and Pluto and Vesta. And gearing up for that um, was interesting because, you know, sure, people were going to say it's got to do with relationships. And sure, people are going to say that it had to do with um, our feelings and, and our motivations because Mars is involved and so, and so on. And um, I think there's been some really interesting dynamics because of this. So I'm going to talk to the Mars part of this. Mars and Pluto, when they get together, can be volatile. Not necessarily. It can be very constructive energy, especially in Capricorn. You can get a lot done. You can be really ambitious. You can get a lot of uh, mileage out of this because you can come up with new ideas, new projects, new creativity, um, get your books organized, get your business organized, revamp your website. It's all very productive. However... Um, you know, we're dealing with an up and coming, you know, what was an up and coming, a relationship between Venus and Pluto, which was brewing since December. And so Venus is people and Venus is partners and Venus is friendships. And and it's all about love and how we love people. And if we love people and, and, um, one of the things that was so important about this is the combination of Venus and Mars moving together and then getting together with Pluto. And so what I, what I read this as and what I have read this as and what I've watched happen to people, everybody was either exhausted or aggravated or just exasperated or like, whoa, this was one hell of a week. You know, it was, it was a lot of that. And I felt that too. And I really feel that people were, um, on edge all week. And there was a lot of edginess Thursday and Friday. And Thursday was the big aspect. Wednesday was the new moon with Jupiter. And I felt a lot of energy from that. I wasn't like sluggish or anything. I felt optimistic and I felt a lot of good energy. But then once we really got into the exactitude of Venus, Mars, Pluto, and, you know, with the dose of Vesta, the fire, you know, I felt the aggravation of Mars and Pluto. And I felt the strength of Mars and Pluto also. And, and so there's, what happens is in order to get us to transform, Pluto is going to present us with our own shadow. And of course there's shadows in the world, but we're going to get presented with our own shadow things about power and transformation and standing in power and standing in a place where we can be empowered and feel good. And if you were feeling into this and paying attention to this, you might have seen or experienced or felt a certain amount of agitation or turmoil or whatever that was uncomfortable, you know, uncomfortable energies. And I believe that there was a lot of uncomfortable energy and now it's dissipated because this has all moved on. And, but even on Friday, things felt heavy and that the energy was heavy building up to it. And then we have the peak, we have the peak on Thursday and then we start to slow down and move away from it. But even so, Mars is, you know, Mars and Pluto, it's a little slower. And then we get all of this energy, uh, you know, to process afterwards. And I talked about this on my Instagram the other day, um, about how to process this Mars and this Venus and this Pluto. 
So we've been waiting for Venus and Pluto to finish their dynamic. They started this in early December. They moved along, got entangled a couple of times because of Venus backwards over, you know, um, Pluto around Christmas. And then here they are. It took all this time, took all this time till March from Venus to move across Pluto for the second time, twice in December, not in January, go direct in January and move through February to catch up to Pluto back where it was. And now here we are. Venus is, has met with Pluto and has passed it. And so there's been one big story for each of us. Now, what has that story been for you? Has it been power struggles with people? Has it been people um, telling you that there's been um, too much going on for them or there's just too much intensity? Have you been hearing these stories from people? Um, but this is a different dynamic because Venus, yes, met with Pluto, like I said, twice in December. Now she comes back, but she's not alone. She's with Mars. So she brought her buddy Mars to help help her fight the battle, right? To the, the good fight against anything that might be kind of dark. And Pluto represents our shadow. Pluto represents our personal closet. Pluto represents the collective closet. And we know there's wars going on in the world. But... Personally, what did you experience? How did you feel? I think a lot of people were aggravated. A lot of people have been aggravated. A lot of people came home overworked. A lot of people were just burned out. A lot of people were like, ugh, the dynamics of this week, you know, too much. And I really think, um, you know, this is a dynamic that we have to process for a while. Okay, and we're past Pluto, yes, and now we're moved away from that, but there has been a lot of brouhaha around this. The thing that was really important for each and every person to do is stand in their power and own their power. And your power may not agree with the power of the person across the table from you, or your boss's power, whatever. Um, but it, what it does is it gives you a sense of, you know, understanding where, where your thoughts and beliefs and your firm power is. And I don't mean stubbornness. I don't mean stubbornness. I mean what is important and empowering for you. I don't mean, nah, I'm just going to say no for the sake of saying no. I, I mean what you truly deeply feel and embody and embody, you know, and what do you feel that you are firm on and that you aren't going to budge on? And if people provoke you and Mars is provocative, people were got provoked this week. Okay. In the past week, people got provoked. So I really think that if you got provoked and you didn't lose your cool, great. But there is, you know, there has been this provocative energy and you need to stand firm in what you believe is right for you. Find a balance because, you know, Venus wants to be friends, you know, can't discredit Venus in this. But there is a, a, a you know, a power struggle for sure. Mars and Pluto often indicate that. And so we had to find where... You know, we exert our power without being a bully <laughs> and where we stand firm in our power and where we don't get our feathers ruffled by simple things like I had computer glitches and, you know, stuff like that, technology issues. And while that was all frustrating, you know, it's kind of nobody's fault, but it's still a frustrating experience. And Mars doesn't like to get frustrated. Mars just wants to get the job done. And when there's technology issues and stuff, you're just like, oh, please. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's just, that's an everyday experience we have. And so they, you know, the volume on the frustration got turned up from Mars and Pluto. So yeah, so that's part of what was happening. Now, um, 
if you feel like you did not resolve conflicts or there were conflicts that you still have hanging in the air, then I suggest you sit down with yourself and own your power to yourself. And maybe you, you talk to a person and you weren't getting through to them and it just was a frustrating experience. Okay. Everybody has their, their place in this. Everybody has their emotions in this, but you have to understand that, you know, think of yourself as a big projection camera everything that's put outside of you is happening internally so the movie the film that's playing inside is getting projected on the outside and if you are um indeed seeing things in your world that you don't like like this is the story you don't want to hear like you don't want to see the story this i can think of a better story than this then rewrite your script Rewrite the script. Rewrite the screenplay. This is not, you don't have to tolerate this. So how would you rewrite your screenplay of the past week? If you could redo this past week and have it go as smoothly and empowered as possible, then I suggest you rewrite the screenplay. Sit down with yourself and journal about it. How would you, how would you rather it have been? And focus on that and meditate on that and think of all the things or feel into especially the things that may have been um, irritating or agitating or complicated and feel into them and why are they like that what part of you is uncomfortable with this outer situation and where can you work on you internally so that you don't create more of the same more of the same and a lot of times when we have venus pass over a planet such as pluto three times we are dealing with the same issue when we finally had to like deal and own what we need to take responsibility for pluto is always about power on some level yes it's about transformation but if you don't transform you can't own your power and so this is something important to remember if you don't rise up transcend transform step up own and not allow anyone to tell you push you around or tell you what to do then you have to own your responsibility for your own subconscious movie that's playing in front of you and get situated and stand in your power no matter how hard it is and that's what Pluto expects of us. Okay, so Pluto is not always going to be our friend. It's going to show us things that are hard to look at or test our firmness or test our empowerment. And where did you succumb or back off? If you feel strongly about something, then you need to, you know, express it. So so that's that's my lecture about the last week. How are you feeling? How is everyone feeling? How are you feeling right now as you listen to this? Do you feel like you moved past something or do you feel like you still got stuck in the, the muck and mire? You know, because sometimes Pluto is muddy. Um, anyway, as we move forward, we have moved forward and some really amazing things have happened. Now, there was that beautiful new moon with Jupiter, like I said, was very energetic. But then yesterday, Saturday, the sun met with Jupiter so the sun and the moon met, like, it was really the moon that met with Jupiter and the new moon, and because it's faster, and the sun finally caught up. So an ounce of that new moon energy was with us again on Saturday, and that was a really good feeling. That really brought some sunshine into our lives. And the sun and Jupiter, it's an illuminating experience. And so, you know, I hope that after all the dynamics of Venus, Mars, Pluto, Vesta, that you were able to own the beauty of the sun, Jupiter, because it only happens once a year. Now it's still with us. We're still feeling it. So enjoy it. Um, expand the way you feel you need to expand. Um, be present for yourself intuitively, emotionally, because it's all in Pisces. And that really helps us, you know, um, open to the greater good and something bigger than ourselves and know that we are a part of something greater and that we're all one big, you know, we're all a unit, all of us, you, me, us, the collective nature, all of this. So, um, you know, Jupiter expands and widens the view. So how did your view get expanded in the last few days? How did that happen? Okay, so now as we move forward, today, Sunday, 
there has been a really important shift. And that is that in the wee hours, where at least where I live, the wee hours in my region of the world, Mars entered Aquarius. And then literally seven minutes later, Venus entered Aquarius. And that means the two of them were very close together, okay? Still very close together, and so close together, in fact, that within seven minutes of time, they m moved into the same sign. What is Aquarius? Aquarius is the revolutionary. Aquarius is the independent. Aquarius is the contrarian. Aquarius is the altruist. Um, Aquarius is the person who um, is the individualist. They're going to do things differently than everybody else, and they're not going to. Um, they're not going to necessarily listen. They might ask for your opinion, but they may not listen for them. Really, listen to you, Aquarius. Don't ever tell an Aquarius what to do. <laughs> You're not going to get anywhere. An Aquarius has made up their mind before they've walked in the door, and an Aquarius is never going to. Um, uh, they're never going to acquiesce just for the sake of acquiescing and, and peace. That you know, remember they're a revolutionary. Um, it's not necessarily something where you are going to find everyone is in agreement with the Aquarius because the Aquarius is thinking ten light years in advance. So people are thinking about right now, and the Aquarius is thinking about the future. And so one of the things that's so important about these guys moving into Aquarius is, okay, so now one moved in at, you know, at, in, at Eastern time, 1.23 a.m. Then Venus moved in at 1.30 a.m. That was the seven minutes between Mars and Venus. And then what happened was they made the exact conjunction like 40 minutes later at 2.12 a.m. Eastern time. So... Aquarius is about freedom and liberation, and there is something liberating about Venus and Mars moving past Pluto, moving past the power struggle, and being liberated in the sign of Aquarius. We're going to get a taste of this, you know, over these next few days and weeks because they're going to stay there for a while, but they have conjunct again. This is another conjunction. And guess what? They conjunct at zero degrees Aquarius. And what happened at zero degrees Aquarius? And I said this last time, um, Jupiter and Saturn Aqu were in Aquarius at zero degrees. And they conjunct exactly at zero degrees. So what part of this are you feeling now that reminds you of December 21st, 2020? And you're like scratching your head, well, we had been in COVID and there was this and that. And yeah, what about it? What part of this now reminds you of then because this in astrology is what we call a recurrence that degree is get it's a trigger point it is a hot point in astrology now and zero degrees Aquarius is a hot point now there's lots of information about zero degrees Aquarius that Jupiter Saturn was zero degrees Aquarius Mars and Venus now relationship planets very different energy than um, you know Jupiter and Saturn their inner planets, their personal planets. There are feelings, Venus, our friendships, um, where we want to assert ourselves, where we're confident. It's fighting for an ideal. Mars is fighting for an ideal. And, you know, it's been irritating. Look, I'm not going to lie. Venus and Mars together on one level, yes, passion relationships, but Mars has been irritating Venus. Mars can be an irritant. And when it comes to Aquarius and a revolutionary and, and ideals, Mars is going to say, huh, you know what? This is my ideal and I'm going to fight for it. So what ideal are you fighting for right now? Okay. And then what happens? What happens with this? What happens that reminds you of back in 2020? You know, this is a this is a more, hmm, I'm going to say tactile, for lack of a better word, aspect. Because Jupiter and Saturn are a little more global, and this is more immediate. This is more like, I'm feeling this in my life right now. I'm feeling this in my hands. I'm feeling this 
I can smell it, I can taste it. Okay, these are more tangible feelings. And so how is that affecting you now? All right. Meanwhile, the moon entered Taurus at 3 a.m. Eastern time. And then, you know, so the moon enters Taurus, which is another fixed sign. Aquarius is fixed. And the moon squares Venus, Mars, and then conjuncts Uranus, you know, tonight, <laughs> later. But this is like the moon just, so those planets like moved in, got into the sign, conjunct, and they got hit by the moon. So there's all sorts of stuff well, in this world, area of the world, going, going on in sleep, right? So, like, we're trying to sleep and we're getting all this, like, stuff, dreams, things, stuff. You know, Aquarius is far out. You know, if, so if you had far out dreams, if you were sleeping during this and you had far out dreams last night, I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, where do you feel that you need to fight for an ideal? Where, do you, where are you fighting for your freedom? Where are you fighting for you know, what you feel is an, is freedom versus maybe restriction. Okay. This is a, this is a different energy. This is a different energy. And so, um, this is not Capricorn. Capricorn's more conservative and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how they operate. That's how, who they are. That's what, when we need that in the world, we need the structure. We need the conservatism we've got to have like some earth and some grounded feelings in this what we're looking for now is a departure from that now we're everybody's ready to rock and roll now now there's a little more punch in the air because it's aquarius it's like yeah i want to revolt <laughs> and if you're pissed off i i understand you know there's been a lot of that energy in the past week so don't be afraid of it talk to yourself. What about this? Get to the root of your own, you know, irrit irritability. What is irritating you? Where do you want it? Why? Do you, what's so important to fight for an ideal? Why is your fist in the air? You know, what ideal are you fighting for and why is it important to you? Okay. Um, that's, that's the big stuff. And we're going to continue to talk about this because this is energy that's going to be with us. Mars and Venus are not going to like fly out of Aquarius tomorrow. They're going to be in Aquarius together now for weeks and, and we're moving into a, a whole other dynamic. Okay, so what, how are you feeling? What does that feel like? Um, in the meantime, there are other things going on this week. Um, on Wednesday the 9th, um, Mercury is going to enter Pisces at 8.32 p.m. Eastern Time. Mercury is in Aquarius now and is winding down its relationship with Aquarius. And it likes Aquarius because Aquarius is analytical and Mercury is all numbers and figures and spreadsheets and, and stuff like that. So Mercury likes Aquarius. It does not love Pisces. Why? Because it's opposite Virgo. Mercury rules Virgo, so um, it's in its detriment in Pisces. Now, if you have Mercury in Pisces, and, you know, you have this month ahead where Mercury's in Pisces, this is, you know, it's fine. It's not going to be, it, detriment doesn't mean, <gasps> the world is ending. Oh my God, everything's bad. No, it just means that Maybe there's things misconstrued. Maybe there's misunderstood dialogue. Maybe the the dynamics of conversation are not what they at crispy and sparkly like they were in Aquarius a few days ago. Okay, um, but it it causes us to maybe be a little more silent. Maybe listen more to our instincts, our intuition, our um, our feelings. Okay, this is a Piscean energy, and it's asking us to do some uh, feeling into stuff, okay? And then later in the week, and, and, and maybe nonverbal, okay? Maybe you have to feel things and not speak them, and that's fine. Again, we're going back to, do you want to feel something? And then, you know, I think there's been a progression of things here. So there's been Mars with Pluto. I'm standing in my power. Mars and Venus going into Aquarius. You know, okay, you know, I'm going to fight for my ideal. I'm standing in my power. I don't like this. I'm, I'm fighting for my ideal. And now Mercury 
is in Pisces and you can just sit there and just not say, and there's strength in silence. You don't have to speak. You can just sit in silence and just like not budge. And that's very, that's very Aquarian too. You know, um, even though I'm talking about Mercury and Pisces, that Mars, Venus and, and Aquarius. Yeah. You could, you could just not budge, dig your heels in. And there, there may be a lot of that going on around you right now. And if you feel that, you know, um, Mercury might soften it up a bit, but I don't think things are going to get soft just yet. Okay. Um, the sun is going to conjunct Neptune in its annual relationship to Neptune on Sunday the 13th, which is a week from now. That's also the day daylight savings time begins in the, in the U.S., in the, in the northern hemisphere. And um, the sun and Neptune are highly intuitive. I've had some really powerful meditations on sun-Neptune days. And I think it's important to recognize, you know, the power of the sun and Neptune. And um, the sun is always going to illuminate something. Neptune is um, what we are feeling but not necessarily seeing. Neptune is the visionary. Neptune is the mystic. So whatever you are sensing right now, trust it again, trust it. You know, the sun was with Jupiter, has been with Jupiter recently and is still with Jupiter. And then in a week, it's going to be with Neptune. This is a very powerful place. The sun will travel this week from Jupiter to Neptune. This is very interesting and highly intuitive, highly spiritual. And it's getting us ready. The sun is going to give us a taster of what's happening when all of those planets line up on Neptune at the end of April. There's going to be Venus, there's going to be Jupiter and Neptune all together. So start to prepare for that. Get a taste of that. Just as Venus and Mars at zero degrees Aquarius and then that Jupiter Saturn at zero degrees Aquarius, they're all going to give us a taster of what happens when Pluto goes into Aquarius next year. Okay, so pay attention to that. So it's these are cycles. We, we need to watch these cycles and, and sense into them. It's very important to do that. Okay, so we're looking at the sun moving from Jupiter to Neptune. Now, could Neptune, you might say, well, that's a little confusing. Sometimes it's not clear. That's where the sun's illumination comes in to bring us clarity in the face of what might be the misty fog that's sitting in front of us. Okay, and that's about it. We have... The moon in Taurus, you know, Sunday, Monday, and then it goes void in Taurus when trining Pluto and Capricorn on Tuesday the 8th at 9.35 a.m. And then it goes, that's Eastern time, it goes into Gemini at 1.40 p.m. Eastern time, so a void for a few hours on Tuesday, and then into Gemini, and then in Gemini... Tuesday, Wednesday, until then it voids squaring Neptune in Pisces, and there's some Neptunian energy again at 11.43 a.m., and then it doesn't go into Cancer. That's not until 2.24 a.m. Friday morning. So really, we've got a very long void moon Thursday from 11.43 a.m. Eastern time till like, you know, 2.30 in the morning. Friday morning, and then it's in Cancer, and it goes into Cancer and stays in Cancer, um, you know, until it enters Leo, 3.30 in the afternoon on Sunday. It's going to be void 11.44 a.m. on Sunday the 13th, and then into into um, Leo at 3.30. So that's basically the week. The important things this week are pay attention to what Venus and Mars are telling you now that they're in Aquarius. How do you feel? What's that about? The feeling of the sun moving from Jupiter to Neptune. Okay, Jupiter's big and bright and expansive and exuberant, and Neptune is sensing and visioning and envisioning and making a wish in some way on both of these planets. This is tying these two planets together is very important. Pay attention to the energy in the week ahead. Do you feel do you feel exhausted? Sometimes Neptune's a little exhausting. The sun is in Pisces. It's a little, it's, you know, this is the sleepy sign. This is where we go to sleep and dream. What kind of dreams are you having? 
What dreams will you have this week? Pay attention. Write them down. What visions came to you? Any insights? Insights are important this week. So pay attention to that. But the Big Bang really is this Venus-Mars again in a brand new sign. And now we're, we're on a different playing field. So what does that feel like? And we're going to explore that more as I go through my week on Instagram. You know my Instagram is the Golden Astrologer if you want to see my videos and my comments on Instagram during the week. My uh, website is thegoldenastrologer.com if you'd like to see my blog or um, you know, book a session with me. You can book an astrology session. You can book a, a Reiki session. And then there's also my um, Twitter, which is at Deb Astrology. I'm not as active on Twitter as I am on Instagram. But please um, contact me if you have questions or comments or you need more information. And do tune in again. Um, I thank you for listening. I thank you all much gratitude for being there and being present for this podcast every week. And a beautiful week to you. Happy Mars Venus in Aquarius.